All right, uh, I'll show you how to do that real quick. Um, so you wanted to, uh, you modeled like a, a form for walls in Rhino and you wanted to get it, um, you wanted to be able to uh, make sure that you cut holes in, uh, or you wanted to be able to uh, cut like the windows out in Rhino and then still translate that into Revit. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that here real quick as soon as Rhino starts up. Um, let's open up Revit as well. So if you want to uh, if you want to follow along and create your own things in in uh, Rhino and Revit, go ahead. If not, you can just uh, follow along. Um, oh. All right. So uh, we'll just uh, create. Real quick, a box, and uh, we'll just label this wall, and uh, so you guys all know how to do do that pretty easily. So we'll just uh, create some more boxes to create random windows. Uh, excuse me. What were you? Oh, um, uh, I was just moving. Uh, like uh, when I did this, I just uh, moved to near or whatever, and then I once again I just clicked again and and just pressed this, and then um, I t typed in a distance uh, is what I did, and then just hit it that that way. It wasn't uh, stopping to any different kind of uh, point. It was just t typing in a distance. So you can type in. Uh, let's just say you type in move, and then you want to move it like 10 feet. You get it like that, 5 feet, and then you click it when you get it. Um, I mean, besides just uh, like rolling over with your mouse. Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it, it won't usually let you do that. I mean, that's your best bet is to go down here and... If you have a whole bunch of different kinds of points, uh, turn off the other ones. I mean, if they're all the same perpendicular points, you're gonna have trouble. Is I don't know. I don't think there's a, a way to do that as far as far as I know. I mean, because uh, I mean, all of these technically, like all of these are near points, and I don't know. I don't think there's really a way to do that. But um, we'll just we'll just cut some holes in this uh, wall here real fast. So we're just going to grab this box and we're going to split it with these. And we're going to keep those uh we're going to keep those uh those surfaces um those beautiful surfaces right there and we're going to uh change them to another layer and we'll just call that windows. And just for for good measure we can have one that's just a a strange shape uh, so that you can see that it uh, works just fine. We're just going to rotate that little form I made in 3D using the rotate 3D command. Whoops. And so that's still coming out pretty weird so I'm just gonna move that vertically and uh, there's a uh, so now we're going to scale that in 1D so it actually fits on here. So there's a command you can use uh, to get some kind of strange form like this to go right onto this surface. Uh, and it's called pull. So there we go. Just 
pulled that general shape to there, and so we'll split that again. And uh, I'm going to change that over to a Windows layer as well. So now we'll have uh, these few amounts of uh, little pieces right on there. So let's uh, let's export all of these. Am I moving too fast? Or? Uh, let's just move it to the desktop. To a that SAT file as usual. Um, We're going to go into Revit and start a new project. And we're going to uh, link the CAD. Whoops, I skipped a step here. I uh, wanted to bring it in as an in place mass. So I was getting ahead of myself there. Um, so we'll link that CAD up and uh, we'll go back up to the desktop and grab a change this to .sat and make sure uh, we change it to feet. We're just going to leave it center to center. Uh, this one, since there's no point for it. There we go. Let's finish that mass. There we, go. we have this this beautiful mass. So um, let's see. You, you cut those out. Um, so we'll just do that same our same move where we uh, model the uh, do a wall uh, by face. But uh, just to keep it uh, consistent, let's, uh, let's do retaining, retaining walls 12 feet there. Um, we're going to do it, uh, instead of finished face, we're going to just do it on the wall center line. Now what we can also do, uh, is keep up with that same command, and uh, we'll do uh, move down to the curtain walls, which you can use. Um, you can choose curtain wall, exterior glazing, or storefront. Um, so let's just choose uh, exterior glazing. And there we go. We have that piece. And uh, now we have, uh, just real quick, you have the forms that we created kind of randomly in Rhino. You could just uh, pretty easily bring it in so you don't have to create a whole new, brand new window or family or anything like that in Revit. Uh, any other uh, questions you're having troubles, anybody having troubles with on their assignments? Well, what if I was going to brought my model into Revit, the wall has a big weird Oh yeah, so so you you just you just brought in a, uh, as a DWG as an SAT file. Uh, you mind if I take take a look? Do you have it with you? Was it just like a really complex form or? Hmm, it seems like it Uh, 
if they're going to do it, um, did you have a, the mask still turned on when you stayed in there? Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's pretty good right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's pretty good right now. You're uh, you're able to uh, you're able to get your stuff working right. Uh, get your whole thing going. <laughs> you look pretty tired. <laughs> tired as me. Um, I don't know. Does anybody else have uh, any questions? I mean, before uh, if uh, if anyone does have any any more questions about any of their assignment stuff, um, we could just get moving on into 3D Max uh, earlier than expected. All right, sounds good. We'll just move into 3D Max then. Um, so we'll quit this. Actually, let's use this little thing for 3D Max now. So let's just, we're going to real quick just uh, going to make a copy of this. And we're just going to use this file real quick. We're going to mesh all of these. And export them as DWGs. I'm going to throw these, uh, if you guys all want to open up 3DS Max on uh, computers, uh, we're, I'm just going to throw these uh, throw these little boxes that we just made real quick up on uh, the L drive. All right, we're just going to uh, start a new scene here in 3ds Max. <coughs> now, does everyone have a uh, is it able to get onto 3ds Max with their computers? I'm not sure that one that you're at has it. Um, but I'm pretty sure uh, the one next to Erica does, and I need the ones in the back. Yeah, and the one. Uh, pretty sure the one right next to to the right of Erica has one. Also, the one next to Alyssa, also back there. Well, most of the ones in the back, because they all have to have. It's only on the ones that have XP. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to do a, a similar thing to what we did last week, but I think we're going to uh, go more into uh, lighting and, and uh, mess around less with materials because uh, the materials in, in 3ds Max design are a little bit different than uh, with 3ds Max. Uh, so I think it's just better if you kind of explore that, uh, whatever you want to try using 3ds Max uh, design. And uh, you can pretty much better than creating your own is download some off the internet and start from there and then manipulate them that way um, but let's uh, just start with some lighting so let's uh let's import that uh, file we just created so 
So it'll be on the uh, the L drive in the uh, 133 and 233 folder. It's called boxes. And uh, let me know when you guys are all uh, loaded up with that. <laughs> that was not good. Sorry about that. Yep. Pretty much just these. Uh, does it, it should, well, you just won't be able to see the cutouts uh, right now, except they are on a different layer. Whoops. Right now, I'm just really quickly, quickly uh, exporting another uh, one for the mullions that we want to design and say we wanted to design them in uh, Rhino real quick. So, and I'm going to copy those uh, onto the drive as well. All right, so um, in 3ds Max, so now we uh, you can see we have this. Uh, you hold down Alt and Shift at the same time, and press down on the uh, middle uh, mouse uh, scroll button. You can see that we have these two kind of box forms, um, and you can see them in the other views. And I guess uh, if you go to the front view, you can see that you have these little windows. But right here, this uh, scene is not lit up because we don't have any lights right now. Uh, but before we get any lights, let's uh, throw in a, uh, a ground plane. Uh, once again, it's kind of like last time. Um, excuse me? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, if you scroll down here to the bottom right, there's a little button that says Maximize Viewport Toggle. So you can switch between 4 and 1. And uh, let's say you just wanted to only go to your, your front view. Uh, you can just click on that one, and it will bring you to that, that one view. Has everyone uh, managed to uh, import those files yet? Uh, not yet. We'll we'll do that later. Uh, so uh, now we're just gonna start. We're gonna uh, real quick go to the top view, and we're gonna go over here to the uh, the create tab, and we're going to uh, just create a plane in the top view. Just gonna make it nice and big. And uh, right now, uh, we're gonna go to the materials uh, materials menu, which by just pressing M takes you to the materials, and uh, should be some blank materials for some reason. Uh, mine is gonna be a little different than yours, but there should just be a. Um, a default uh, default material you can choose so it's just like select a template and uh, let's just start with uh, matte finish and let's uh, just apply that to the material selection so so you have uh, that surface that you just created as a ground plane you can uh, you have that selected you just assign this material that's just this default matte surface and uh, let's go up to this button up here, which is select by name. And you can see um, as we imported those, um, those things we created, there was uh, a layer for the wall and a layer for the windows. 
So let's select both of those as well. And just for right now, we're just going to give them this default material as well. Um, so you'll see that in 3D Max, um, you're not, it's not really about the, uh, the edges of surfaces. It's about like, uh, whether or not there's actually is a physical edge. Um, so it's not visible uh, in 3D Max, like these uh, windows and everything, um, unless there's a different material or uh, actually like a thickness to it. Uh, so, uh, real quick, uh, let's just uh, close the material editor. And uh, let's say you wanted to uh, apply uh, thickness to this wall. Let's hope this works this time, because the last time I did this, it froze. But um, let's, uh, let's select, make sure we just select only wall. And we're going to go over here to the right. Um, and over here, this whole menu is uh, pretty much all of your tools and options. Um, so there's a create, a modify, um, which are pretty much the two main ones we'll use. Um, there's the hierarchy and motion and and, um, and utilities. And display we also can use to hide objects and or freeze objects, kind of like in AutoCAD. Um, uh, but... Uh, right now we're just going to stick with the, the modify tab and uh, over here under the modifier list you want to scroll down and uh, there's a, a modifier called shell oh sorry um, well you can just click on them uh, as they are or you can uh, go to select by name up here on the top there's this little arrow with the little uh, lines next to it and um, the, the when we uh, when we imported it from Auto or from uh, Rhino as a as a mesh, um, we made sure that the uh, the files that we're, we wanted to have separate materials were on different layers, and it comes in automatically as those layers in in 3D Max. Um, we're able to we're able to select that. So. As you can see here over in the this perspective view, you can see that uh uh th th this this view right here is just um there's just like a option to have realistic I don't know if that's a an option in your version in 2010 I think this is two thousand yeah this is 2012 I don't know if that's a, a version it's it's a uh, but I mean you could pretty pretty easily right now uh just Go for it. Uh, go up to uh, rendering and and uh, render setup real quick, and just uh, just take take a look and see if it uh, see if it does render. Whoops, mine's set to uh, mine is set to region. But you can just test it real quick to see what it does without lights, and you can see it's kind of hard to see what's going on because uh, we haven't set up any lights and different materials yet. But uh, it's a start. Um, so. You can see that the uh, um, were you guys able to give thickness to your wall? <laughs> no worries. What uh, what are you struggling with? So there's a whole bunch of other options. Uh, so Alyssa brought this to my attention. Uh, if you want to select the object, um, just by clicking, you have to use this tool, which is called Select Object. Uh, that's up at the top, next to this uh, little box next to it. And then if you want to select the object by uh, name, you use this one. But let's say you want to move the object, you can just select it with this tool. And then you can, it'll have this little gizmo pop up and you can uh, shift it in these directions. But. 
to the to the plane. Um, I just uh, went to select the plane and uh, I have just applied this uh, generic matte material to it. Uh, and you weren't able to do that. You can take a look at that. So you'll notice on this uh, materials menu, um, if you have a, a certain object selected, um, you'll notice that this this uh, selection will be kind of white. This outline right here, um, so you have this like white diagonal outline, and that will be the actual material of the select of the object you have selected. So say you deselect it, you'll see how it goes just gray, but all these all these uh, other materials don't have uh, little uh, arrows or triangles on the sides because they aren't uh, applied to any object in the in this scene. Um, were you having uh, other problems back then? So. Uh, when you do uh, renders and everything, they they won't be they won't be there. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, you so you're able to apply the material then, right? Um, so let's uh, real quick. We're gonna go in materials. Let's just get a a nice. Uh, we're gonna go over to this. Huh? Oh yeah, thickness of the wall. Sorry about that. Um, uh, so select the, the walls and you're going to go over here uh, to modifier to the modify tab and there's going to be a modifier list of all things there's all kinds of uh, different kinds of modifiers you can explore uh, the UVW map is, is interesting for changing the, the mapping of uh, texture but for this one we just select shell which just gives you a uh, it gives a 3D thickness to the to the form, and uh, here in the parameters you can uh, select the distance. And right here it just says out outer amount is one. Um, let's go inner amount. Give it 0.5. Oops. Let's just see. It'll give it some thickness now. Um, is it not working? So you can give it whatever kind of thickness you want, whatever you think your walls would have. Um, and we're just going to real quick uh, create a, a glass material. Uh, so let's just select a template for within glass. We're just going to stick with that for right now. We're not going to mess with any of the uh, materials or anything. Um, although you can go into many of these uh, 
go into many kinds of settings with uh, with this. Let's uh, turn down the index or refraction though, actually, which makes it really kind of confusing. Um, so now let's just uh, take this and uh, whoops, did I? Weird, I think my hmm, I seem to have done something weird with my shell. Whoops, outer amount got changed. There we go. Um, so now uh, we're gonna uh, select the windows real quick. And uh, we'll get them, go up to the materials, and we're going to just apply this glass material we just created to them. Um, so now, without adding any lights, really, uh, we're just going to uh, going to test what this uh, rendering will look like. So let's uh, go up to the rendering setup, or you can hit F10. And just for testing purposes, we'll keep it at 640. I think that's it's pretty easy. Um, and just use the view and make sure you have uh, per, maybe just it'll be easiest if you just lock it on perspective so no matter what your part you're working on it keeps rendering that every time so uh, let's just try rendering that and you'll see just a pretty light image here with uh, you can just barely make it out um, so let's start adding some lighting here So under the Create tab, go to Lights, and uh, we're just going to uh, use Standard, and we're going to use a Skylight, which is pretty much gives an overall light to the scene, which isn't really going to be casting shadows or anything. It's just we're just going to uh, use it as a just a general light, um, and so we're going to just, under Multiplier. This is like the intensity of the light. We're just going to give it a 0.5, so it's only like uh, it's not a very strong uh, light. So we're just going to uh, kind of be lighting the scene in general. Um, so we'll just go over here to the top view and you can just place it anywhere you want really. Uh, uh, we'll just place it down here in the corner. And uh, we'll go uh, back into the rendering setup and just see what that, uh, see what that does. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just on the ground. Um, it's uh, it's not really actually shining a different in a direction. A skylight is pretty much just a, a general light that's going to be cast on everything. Uh, so it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, if uh, if you you want to make sure that it actually is lighting things, uh, you can always uh, go into your front view, select it, and click this tool, which is the select and move tool, and uh, feel free to move it up above. If you would like, and uh, but I don't think it. Uh, let me see if I make sure it doesn't make any much of a difference here. Yeah, so just like the same uh, general material. So um, now uh, we'll uh, bring in another kind of light. Uh, pretty much a. Uh, one of the types we're going to use is this target direct light. Um, so if you want to click over uh, here with target direct and go back into your top view, we can just uh, click kind of uh, far away from your uh, at an angle or whatever angle you want, and drag towards uh, drag towards our. Uh, our scene, our, our main objects here. And uh, you'll see that it just is right now totally horizontal. So right now we would want to uh, actually to make this and kind of be like a sun. Um, we're going to go into the front view 
and we're going to uh, grab the light source over here and bring it up at an angle so that it actually is uh, it is more like the sun. And uh, now that we have this selected, let's uh, over here. You guys uh, are you guys able to create the? Uh -huh. Let's uh, we'll undo that. We're just gonna create this light again. So up here, we're gonna select the uh, target direct. Make sure it's a target direct light. Um, and in the top view, just gonna select the area. Click first out here, then drag towards the center and towards your object and you can see it in the other views kind of uh, coming towards that and let go and then uh, on the front view you can see that it's just this horizontal light at this point so um, we're gonna use the select and move tool and in the front view we're going to grab the uh, we're gonna just select that uh, the light source which is like this little arrow thing and we're gonna drag it up so it's at a, uh, more of like a sun angle. And without changing any uh, parameters real quick, uh, why don't we just try a, a quick rendering. So you see it's pretty intense because um, it's uh, really focused right now. Uh, but it is, and it is casting the shadows and everything. Uh, so we're going to go uh, select it again, and we're going to go into the, the Modify tab, and you'll come down here to the General Parameters. And uh, we're going to come down here to uh, Intensity, and uh, we're going to put the intensity down also to around something. Let's just try 0.7 right now. And under directional parameters, you'll see that these uh, these two uh, little kind of cylinders here that are highlighted uh, are very uh, very concentrated right in the area. So if you um, if you change this to uh, this hotspot beam is kind of like the main focus of the light. Um, so if you make that quite a bit larger, um, you'll see this uh, start to get much bigger so that the area of focus is not just right there. Um, and so in the fall off is kind of uh, how much of a, a blur there is uh, for the shadows so they're not just completely hard shadows. So if you want to make the shadows a little softer, uh, creating a, a fall off field that's uh, a lot higher, you can see it grow right there, is a, a pretty good idea. Um, so let's just see uh, what that does.